Welcome back to Brand Out Consulting. Today we're going to be talking about how to input an item. So here on our dashboard we're going to go down to Master Files. Now whenever we input something typically we go to Master Files. Go up here to Items and we're new. So what we've been creating is pencils. So today we're actually going to be putting in the lacquer for our natural pencil. So we're going to put in item number 30, P35. That's going to be our number and it's going to be lacquer. Extended description, put in whatever it is that you like. Reference number, that is the number for you to put in for your internal uses. Sales items number, that will actually connect with um, your accounting software. You can get it to talk to it either through Sage or QBO. So we're going to go ahead and click on item type. And if you notice, there's four types of items. There's raw material, resource assembled, bulk issue, and outside processing. So this one's going to be raw material. But let's go ahead and look what happens if we click resource. So resource, if you notice up here, we actually lose a tab right here, stock. And we gain a button here, labor. So if we're going to add labor in, Obviously, we put it under resource. Raw material is anything that we're going to put into the assembly. With assembled, we're going to put that together when we do our bill of materials. The difference between bulk issue and raw material is just in the fact that bulk issue does not go into whip. It's anything that is put out on your factory floor that is for general use, but it goes into particular items. So it actually doesn't issue the bulk item into whip where raw material it does. We can deal with that a little bit later as well. Outside processing is when we ship it out, get some work done on it. For us, we're going to be doing that with labeling. But right now, we're just going to go ahead and click on raw material. Down here at unit weight, this is important if you are going to distribute cost by weight. If you're not going to, you can keep that zero. This will be grayed out because this is actually set up in your company options. For unit costs, we're actually using standard costing. So we need to put in what we're going to measure against for our variances. So right now we're just going to put 0 0.017 as our cost. So it's going to cost us less than a penny per. For inventory cycle, if you keep it at zero, it will be always counted on every time you do an inventory count. You can change it here. For our default unit of measurement here, we're doing half an ounce per use. So there's 256 half ounces in a gallon, 0.5 ounce per gallon. Now here in the stock, we have our maximum, our reorder, reorder quantity, and minimum levels. Those are important later on when we go to auto build, and our bill of materials. If you want to put them in now, you're more than welcome to. Here in our stock tab, we start with our maximum, our reorder level, our reorder quantity, and our minimum. Over here, we have our lot size. Now, we get 240 gallons per pallet, so that's what we're going to put there. Our order lead days are 10 days, and where we stick them in our warehouse is going to be P66. All right, now we also have to assign a location here. So we come over here to add new line and we are going to find our main stock room, select it. And if we have any other locations, we can add them here as well, which will help with stock movement up here. Now, if that's all we're going to do. Okay, so here on our suppliers tab, this is where we're going to add our suppliers. So we're going to add it here and we're going to also have a secondary supplier. Leon. So here's where we're going to want to select our preferred supplier. If we select it here, later on when we go to choose our vendor during the reordering process, we can select our preferred vendors, lowest cost vendors, quickest vendors, whatever it is. So this is the screen that you do that in. And manufacturers, this is where you can add a, a temporary manufacturer. This actually does not go beyond this particular screen. So you don't want to add suppliers here. You can add suppliers in this line, but you cannot add any suppliers or manufacturers. It will only sit in this screen. Our costs, these will start to get better and more robust the longer we use the product. 
And as far as the rest of these goes, we will deal with the rest of these tabs as we go on. But for right now, we're going to click save. And now we have our new item here, MP35. And if you notice right here, our unit cost is now grayed out. The only way we can change that is by going into our account. We can't change that here anymore. Because again, remember, with standard costing, that's what we measure it against. So if we go here and we go to cost adjustments, specific item, and then we go down to P35. Now we can adjust our cost right here. And we're back to our mapping screen where we have created wood slats, graphite, glue, lacquer, yellow paint, labor, eraser, ferrule, packaging one and packaging two. So those are all the things that we've been able to make so far with the create item. Now go ahead and create the items in Mysis and update your map. Anyway, if any of this is helpful, please like, share and subscribe and go ahead and comment below if there's anything else you need help with. Thanks a lot.